name is Karen Flynn. Um, I am the director of the hospice program at Androscog and Home Care and Hospice. Well, hospice is a lot of things. It, first of all, it's a philosophy of care. Um, it's a grassroots movement. Um, it is individuals reclaiming an experience that says that coming to the terms with end of life, which is going to happen to everybody, does not necessarily have to be a tragedy, even though it's loss and um, you know we all experience it differently, but that it's a normal part of our life transition, our life experience. It, um, the priority is to um, assist and support and care for the individual rather than to attempt a cure of the disease. So it de-emphasizes illness and re-emphasizes the human being. Um, it's delivered uh, in the form of a team uh, because we're trying to address all aspects of the human experience. The physical, of course, it provides expert pain and symptom management. Um, but there's also an emotional and a spiritual component of uh, a person's experience when they're dealing with terminal illness. And we work as a team, we work very close to meet all of the holistic needs that Fred may have. Um, we have, on the RN, we have a social worker, um, a chaplain, home health aides, we have volunteers, and then we even have bereavement coordinators um, for after that Fred takes his journey. The hospice program's ability to emphasize personhood versus illness is um, known to really increase quality of life, sometimes even length of life by some of the latest research. I elected to live here the rest of my life. We are such nice people that it's a pleasure <laughs> to have them mm -hmm. here come in. Uh, there was always a misconception about hospice. People think that hospice is a place to go to die. Um, they think it's, we're here to hasten things, and we're not. We're here to make them comfortable. It allows a person then to also regain control over what is happening in terms of managing their disease and how they spend each day, which becomes more and more precious when an individual knows that life is limited. I can remember Andrew Scog and home care and hospice being a part of my life for most of my childhood. Um, my mother worked as a nurse for Andrew Scog and home care and hospice before she became a patient. Even just the way that I, I perceived home care and hospice to be, when you have them in your house, it's a different experience. It also provides added supports. Um, it, it's very service rich. Uh, the team that comes into the home is quite extensive. They're there fairly frequently. They certainly are there, particularly during the very final days of life, uh, frequently daily. To be able to have my mom in the comfort of our own home that we had lived in for 18 years at that point and I had I was one years old when I moved into that house and 18 years old when she passed in that house and and have my mom in that house during the sickest time of her life was such a blessing and she was able to stay right where she wanted to be we also do that acute level, or what we call a general inpatient level of care, when the, the care needs are too high or too difficult to manage in the home setting. And we do most of that at the hospice house. It's an inpatient facility for patients who need intensive um, symptom management of their terminal illness and their problems that they're having. We have a great team of employees working here. We have a medical director, a nurse practitioner, um, registered nurses, CNAs, a um, whole array of supplemental people, wonderful volunteers who help with bedside, they deliver meals, they cook, um, answer phones, provide support, just one-on-one -on -one companionship with um, patients and their families. We do have lots of folks that come in for symptom management um, and about a third of our patients actually go home or to a, a facility from here. It's not always for somebody to come to have their end of life. Hospice personnel, particularly the hospice nurses, really do provide 24-hour a day, seven days a week, holidays, rain or shine, 
care to those who they are servicing in the communities and long-term care facilities and at the hospice house. We have a saying that, that you know you can only do this once. You can't go back and undo a distressing experience and so they take uh, people working in hospice take it very seriously that um, this is a one-shot deal to really help people navigate those very difficult times, um, those end-of-life times.